Certain ideas that we have taken to be true, have become antiquated and reached their expiration date, holding us back, instead of propelling us further into our evolutionary unfoldment. To quote the doctor of the soul C. G. Jung, our especial need today, is liberation from outworn ideas. Strongly held false ideas have killed far more people than the medieval epidemics of bubonic plague or smallpox. We are all truly threatened by unexamined bad ideas. Jung writes, greater than all physical dangers are the tremendous effects of delusional ideas. Humanity has a long history of falling into mass collective delusions, just because an idea is held by a majority of humanity, does not make it true. As a matter of fact, due to humanity's unconsciousness, combined with its aggestibility, a widespread dogmatically held idea, is more likely than not to be riddled with unseen errors, and hence, is oftentimes mistaken. Dungeon analyst, James Hillman, felt that we have literally fallen sick, due to our ideas. Ideas have real power, as they are the means by which we see and interpret a world, and creatively envision and give meaning to our lives. New ideas change the way we think about things, as well as ourselves. Newly emerging archetypal ideas can activate people's creative imagination, as these ideas are expressions of and catalysts for a deeper more expansive vision of the world and our place in it. These ideas, emerging like a lotus from the dark depths of the collective unconscious itself, can be conceived of as living psychic organisms that evolve, and concurrently help us evolve, as we come to terms with integrating their deeper meaning. These living ideas, are not merely abstract things to passively think about, but involve our active engagement and participation in integrating, and unfolding what they are revealing to us. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Becoming rigidly stuck in the ideas we hold in our mind, is dangerous. People can obstinately grasp onto, and become taken over by, outworn and sterile ideas. Toxic ideas, or what I've called infotoxins, can literally take hold of and possess people's minds, who then unwittingly become the purveyors of these ill-conceived ideas into the world. The quote Jung's closest colleague Marie-Louise von Franz, evil often hides behind idealism, and behind isms in general, which are as often as not simply labels disguising a very unspiritual doctrinarism. In such cases, one knows what is right and what is good for other people, and, indeed, for mankind. That is the beginning of the end, of the decline. More human beings are tortured and killed in the name of these isms, than die as a result of the forces of nature. In other words, ideological possession, possession by ideas, is an imminent and very real danger. Because of the extremity of our current situation, there is a real possibility in our time, that many of humanity's long-standing fixed ideas that no longer serve us, are going to be outgrown, allowing new ideas and ways of seeing that are more reflective and in alignment with who we actually are, to emerge and take their place. Based on past evidence, however, it seems to require a catastrophe to snap us out of our bad ideas. Jung writes in a letter, surely great catastrophes such as earthquakes or fires, are no longer convincing to the modern mind, but we don't need them. There are things much more gruesome, namely man's insanity, the great mental contagions from which we actually suffer most indubitably. Everybody wants peace and understanding, and with an infernal fatality, the nations are working for war and misunderstanding. Not even the most modest disarmament has been possible. That shows where our real catastrophes come from. To say this differently, the origin of the most serious catastrophes in our world, is the human mind and its woefully mistaken ideas about the nature of things. The only genuine ideas, to quote philosopher Jose Ortega y Gasset, are the ideas of the shipwreck. In other words, it is oftentimes when we have exhausted all of our resources, are at our wits end and have hit rock bottom, that we are open enough for a novel idea to fall into our heads. 
As Jung has pointed out, when it is a question of mass psychosis, nothing but new symbolic ideas which embrace express and help us recontextualize, and revision, the emerging chaos and disorder in a new way, can't save us from our self-created collective nightmare. What can be thought of as a saving idea, i.e., a novel, creative, redemptive, archetypal conception, can protect a people from succumbing to, in Jung's words, the infection of a uniform and one-sided idea. It is as if new ideas which inspire creativity and expand our mind, are in the air, waiting to be discovered. Sometimes these ideas suggest themselves. These saving ideas have been secreted by the universe into our unconscious minds at this time in history, as the very medicine humanity needs to heal what ails our species. Here's a new salvific idea, the savior itself can arrive in the flash of a truly new creative idea. We don't make our ideas, our ideas make us. New creative living ideas can potentially open up novel streams of cognition and give a new flow to the drought-plagued psychic energy stream of humanity. New symbolic ideas can be therapeutic and liberating, as if we have lifted a rock that is lying on top of a germinating seed, allowing the shoot to begin its natural growth. The true merit of an idea is a function of how it affects us. Does it generate other ideas, make us think, inspire us to reflect upon things in a new way, spark our creativity, awaken something within us? Ideas can wake us up to what is truly possible, or they can blind us, depending on their nature. A new idea can set up a chain reaction in people's minds, which can potentially unleash previously unimagined insight and creativity. Like a key, a new idea can unlock the latent creative spirit within us, a spirit which can be likened to a treasure that has been hidden deep within the recesses of the human mind that has been thirsting to be set free. The revolutionary idea has the potential to catalyze revolutions in thinking. A shift in a single idea can give birth to a new epoch. Thankfully, when the time is ripe for a psycho-activating new idea to emerge into our world, it can't be locked up by the powers that be. If a living idea is incorporated into the existing structures of the world and institutionalized, however, it can be systematically deadened, killed even, by professional teachers of the new idea. And yet, if the newly emerging idea is properly tended and cultivated in the right atmosphere, it can grow and multiply, going viral, in a way that changes everything. Our idea of ourselves, who we think we are, and our place in the world, what physicist David Bohm calls our self-worldview, is a primary driving force in human affairs, as who we imagine ourselves to be, and how we think we fit into the greater scope of the universe powers, and influences the major currents of world history. The majority of us, however, are still under the sway of an impoverished conception of what it is to be a human being. An idea that is deeply embedded in the collective unconscious of our species is that we exist as an isolated impotent material object, a separate self, who lives in a mindless clockwork mechanical and meaningless universe. This is a deluded idea that takes the heart soul and magic out of the world, as well as ourselves, relegating the universe to a dead inanimate and insensate domain. Both aspects of this viewpoint, our idea of ourselves and our idea of the world, are crude artifacts of a truncated and deficient self-worldview, that is incapable of adequately responding to the multiple world crises with which we are confronted. The one thing the greatest tyrants in all of history were afraid of was a new idea. This is just as true today in our increasingly interconnected digital age, as the powers that be attempt to censor liberating ideas that are not in line with the mainstream narrative and its underlying agenda. Nothing in the world, however, is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.